guys, Nick Drosos, and welcome to another podcast, The Warrior Mindset. And this week, he needs no introduction. One of my favorite fighters of all time, a legend, somebody that I, I, I you know, I, I look up to and respect. And I think not only as a fighter, but what he's done as an individual. And I see your videos and how you're, what you're doing and giving back. And we have Bass Root and Bass. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You're very welcome. I'm loving it. I, I, I watched the video yesterday. You're getting stabbed with a pen, but you're blocking them off. That's pretty cool. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things I did a couple of years ago that I just wanted to do something different. So I'm like, okay, what can I do to go out there and really kind of pressure test and put what I'm teaching to a test as close as possible to real? And I went out and I came up with this idea and I brought my partner. I'm like, let's just film this. Well, what do we do? We're just going to go ask people to try to attack me. Whoever gets me, I'll give them 20 bucks. Are you sure you want to do that? I'm like, yeah, we'll just see what happens. And yeah. it was one of those things that are kind of a hit or miss. So it was a lot of fun doing it. But I, I had to tell you, I went back yesterday. I was looking at some of the videos. And I have to start with the classic. Because when I started YouTube, it was almost 10 years ago. And then I see this guy in a bar going bang, bang, bang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I loved it. What made you do that? OK, so I came out with the, the big books of combat. Uh, and that guy kind of screwed me over. They, they, did a, they put the fast one on me. But anyway. What my promise was, and I was already away from this guy, that I was going to be a self-defense book as well. And I said that to the people. I said, the first 300 people will get to get a free self-defense book. Who buy the boss with his big books of combat? Now, of course, I part away with the guys, but my words were still standing. And I figured, you know, because I still said it, I said, you know what? And I made a deal with the guy. I said, okay, we'll just go 50-50 on that because for the rest, I don't want to do any business with you anymore. I'm just going to record a DVD. That's going to be easier for me. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do another God knows how long in the studios. I don't want to do it. And I just started seeing it was pretty much no script. We, I wrote down defense for this, defense for that, defense for that. And it was just shot from the hip. I had no clue I was making sound effects. I had no, this is actually an hour and 45 minutes. Pretty gnarly yeah, stuff. Right. Serious. But with all the sound effects that the one guy put it all in one four minutes, five minute clip. It was hilarious. This guy, man. He gave me so much work, you have no clue. I mean, Grand Theft Auto, the fitness guru, commercials. I mean, everybody came, because of that clip, they came to the cell phone commercials, also that I had to use that. And uh, I tried to contact the guy like for three times, because I said, obviously you're a fan. I said, go to my website, pick anything you want. I said, I'll, I'll send to you whatever you want, because you gave me a lot of work, but unfortunately he never reacted to me. How, how was that experience in terms of, was it your first, uh, video or live that you you started like I mean you were known as a fighter was it the first time you put yourself out there no I, I did some uh, pancreas fight series in Holland before okay that would be the first time but this was like the, the second thing I did afterwards oh actually no 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 because before this I did also a panther production that was the guy with the books okay. uh, and, and that went okay but then with the books he, uh, he he got me but you know what you, you learn from your mistakes like these things from that moment on, I did everything myself, you know? So I said, okay, I want to make a DVD series. Okay. My counterattack was, of course, the boss with the big DVDs of combat. I said, okay, you're going to play that game. I'm going to play this game as well. So I came out with the largest, biggest instructional series there is. 11 hours and no BS slow motions and all that stuff. No, I'll show it you broken down. And then I show it you. If reality speed, you want to see it again, go back. Because I hit every detail. And then most of the time, because that was the great thing about Pancras, the organization was fighting for, there were these rope escapes. You know, that means that if I would get you in a submission, but you could touch the rope, I would have to let you go. The good part of that is that sometimes I fought four or five fights in one fight. Because, you know, you, you get back on your feet, and he's got a lost point. It's like, like let's say, the same as an eight count. And then you continue again. So you get way more ring time in there. But what also happened is like, I have like 51 submissions instead of what my record says, 12 or 14, I believe it says, um, because of those rope escapes. But because of that, I have a lot of footage. So every time in a, with a certain move that I show on the DVD, most of the time I had a back of me actually pulling it up in a real fight. And I thought that gave some uh, validity to it. I think it's amazing that I always say, if, when you could bring a reality or, or, or experience or teach through something that, as, that you've either tested, pressure tested, or done in real life, or I think that just adds to, uh, to the value of what you're giving to people, especially when they're trying to learn, especially when there's so much information, and even worse, 
misinformation yeah. in terms of self-defense. And I think self-defense is one of those. And I heard you say on, uh, on the other path, podcast, Chat Combat, it's one of those slippery slopes. So w- what is your take on self-defense when you watch all these videos out there right now? Yeah. Oh, well, a lot of it is BS. You know, like if you see gun defenses in where they slept the gun outside your hand and it's falling on the ground, and now, now it's a fight for the gun. On the, I mean, it makes no sense. You need to control the weapon and destroying the target and then disarming. You know, all these things, there's a certain path that you go through it. And, and, and I think that some guy, I mean, you see the videos. I saw this woman, way overweight woman. She's teaching self defense against three guys. Literally, I've seen it. Oh, it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And I go, people. But there are people in their class, you see, and that's the false sense of security that I, you give them, and and that can, that might end up ha- having them get get killed, you know. And that, I believe that's on the teacher. You I, know? I totally, so that could be quality control. I totally agree, and I tell people if you're <clears throat> going to teach self defense, and it's a lot of shades of gray in there. Yep. Uh, but you want to try to get it you, you, as as close as possible and try to nail it because not everything is going to work at a hundred percent at every single situation. Yep. So, I mean, you need to pressure test it. You need to be realistic because I tell people we have a, a social responsibility and a moral responsibility to teach people as much as possible, how to survive, how to escape, how to diffuse. Basically when I teach self-defense, how do I get you home safely under any means without trying to teach something stupid. Like people tell me, Oh, if the guy's a knife and he wants my money, what do I do? I always say, (laughs) I I always say, okay, so are you alone? Are you with your son? Uh, am I alone or with my son? You're with your son. Are they two? Are they three? They're two. Do one. So you got to break it down and then say, I give them my money or I don't give them my money. So I think that's, that's the hard part of teaching self-defense because like you said, it's that slippery slope. It's, you know, you always, always comply with them. And uh, the only way that you know, if, if the guy's not wearing a mask and suddenly he shoots somebody, yeah, now you're going to have to do something because now you're a witness and he doesn't want to show you up in court, to show you up in court. And so now you're going to have to take stuff. And if you don't know anything, well, you don't know anything. If you learn a little bit, you already increase your chances immediately, but just knowing 10%, you know, and it's all in the mind. It's just the mindset. They are afraid as well. That's what I tell people. You think all these the tough guys with the gun. No, all that power is in that gun or is in that knife. You take that away, that's it. They're done. You got them. You know, demoralized. And that, and if you know that and you just go in for the kill and you don't stop until the target is done, you know, that's, that's a very scary thing. Headbots, everything in your power, it will freak them out because that's why they go after the weak people. You know, those are the bullies in school. The heroes who go after a weak kid, preferably with a group, you see, it says something about their personality. I'm the biggest bully in town in my school that I knocked out. I remember his brother was in jail and he was like 17 years old already for, for uh, armed robbery. You see, that was the whole family. It was just a, a bad family. And, uh, and, and people like that do that, you know. They, once you take it in your mind to just rob from people, I mean, just the defect that you have in your mind, there's, there's something wrong. And then a gun. I, listen, I've been some crazy stuff and I had people... My friends who, who did robberies that I, of course, distanced myself from, but they would ask me if I would come join them. And I go, no, of course not. Listen, you, you're freaking out if you put a gun in somebody's face. Yeah, but the gun is not loaded. I go, they don't know that. Are you they stupid? You can ruin a life by just putting an, even if it's an empty gun, they will never be uh, um, happy anymore. It can completely crush a person if you do that. I said, think about that. That's an effect for the rest of your life. Not a family, no kids, no nothing, you know, horrible life because of you. Don't do that shit. <laughs> totally, totally. I, I saw a fight outside the club because I used to, I worked as a bouncer <clears throat> and two guys got into fight and the one guy pulled out a gun and put it to the other guy's head. And the other guy, I kind of knew both of them. They were both gangsters, but one was a real gangster and one was a fake gangster. Yeah. And the real guy's like, shoot, pull the trigger. And I just saw his face go, and just grab the gun. And he gave them a beating right there. They all jumped him. And I always say, if you're going to disarm somebody, the question you have to ask, are you ready to use the weapon? If you're going to pull out a weapon, are you ready to use it? Do you know how to use it? Do you have training in it? Because you could easily use it and it can be used against you. You need to think of that before you decide to carry or use any type of weapon. Yeah, plus also these people, they have no clue. Know your target and it's beyond and all these rules. They have no clue. They just pull a gun. If they shoot you, they might shoot somebody who's standing behind them. They, 
You know, it's, 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 it's fear-based. And listen, we can all be cool and we can all think, you know, but I've never been in a situation. I've never been able to put a freaking gun in my head. Well, I, I, I prefer that, I guess, over a knife, a <laughs> double-edged knife, you know, on close distance. I would prefer that, but you never know how you're going to react, you know? We, we, we can all, we can be prepared the best we can do, but unless you've been in that situation now, and I think that fighting under, under pressure, you know, like as, as a professional fighter, those things you learn how to deal with pressure, and what I did in the past, I think I will be okay, but you know, you can never give it 100%. You, you simply can't, even I. I know a police officer, well, not personally, it's through my buddy Amir, and, uh, and this guy, and it was, we're talking 20 meters, away so let's say 21 yards to make it easy for the people here in america and there was a guy high on pcp and he started running towards him at the night and he empties this complete gun in him and he still got stabbed he's still blocked and, he, and thankfully he had a block but he got stabbed in the arm and later on they saw that every single bullet hit its target it all hit in there he didn't miss one but the guy still had him 20 yards away so uh, well, you got to wait out with people. When I did my uh, edge instructor course with defensive tactics in Boston, the police, I made them do a drill from three feet, nine feet, 10 feet, 15 feet. And the officer was a few feet off the wall and we had to charge <coughs> with the knife. The idea that you're gonna get to your gun before my knife in three feet, impossible. No. At about six, 10, around 10 feet, it became a 50-50 where if you were fast enough, you might go with, with the gun or maybe block and go for your gun, but anything under six, eight, it was like you, it was almost like, and I have a video where the officer's going for the gun and then last minute he steps in because the knife was too close. And I think that's the important thing of drilling and pressure testing this stuff to really see yeah. what really works. Yeah, you know, this is what you immediately have to make, hit the switch, right? That's the, if they come running in, there's a front kick waiting for you, boom, get this is an hour, you got, you know, but the priority most of the time goes to the weapon, you know, and you go, no, at that moment, that's not the priority. You see this many times in fights as well. I remember I got a lot of heat over somebody with a guillotine choke. I said, with a guillotine choke, what you need to do is just step in a different position so that it takes the pressure off. But everybody starts, well, I thought everybody, because the smart people knew that I was right. I said, you gotta, you know, you gotta first defend the choke. I said, no, it's not. You never do first defend the choke. I said, well, if you want to hear, I saw Pat Militich against Hansel Gracie. Well, he was defending the choke. Well, guess what? Hansel Gracie jumped guard. That was it. So he didn't control the legs, you know, and moved to a better position. So you have to do that because as, they, as soon as they jump up, but you see, there's all these one moments. Like last time, I was uh, I posted a video of me doing a drill on my uh, body access system here, uh, and then the kid go, "Oh, your face is wide open when you punch." I said, "So it's Robin Deckers. His face is also wide open." I said, "It's with Mike Tyson. It's also wide open." I said, "As long as you throw power shots and you throw fast, nobody will counter you, because they know that if, if while you're throwing power shots, if they try to do this and if one of those punches lands, you're out. Yeah. You know, but those people never had any martial arts experience. They just see an open. They say, "Yeah, if you punch, you're open here." Yeah, you're yeah. right, because that that thing actually, when people would say, "If I would load up," and I tell people, "You can load up here." And they go like, oh, you should never say that. There's always somebody who took the bait in the past at the seminar. They say, okay, uh, but you're wide open. I said, really? You think you can hit me? Yeah. I said, let's put it into practice. I'm going to take you with this combination. So you know I'm going to do it. So you already have one up on me. And let's see if you can do it. And then I would just blast. And they go like, oh, you shit. I can't, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to slow motion? Yeah. No. You're not going to be able to do it. I say, here's another guy. I posted that. Roman Deckers. <laughs> the biggest killing machine in Thai boxing ever. I say, look, he's wide open. <laughs> Nobody hits them. Why? Because they're too afraid. If they leave their jaw, you know, they, they get hit by one of those punches. That's it. It's the end of the fight. And that's the same with Tyson, the same with everybody else. I, I, you, I, you know, it's always easier. I'm a huge Tyson fan. What do you oh, think yeah, about him too. coming back? Like, I mean, I, I, think, I, I think he's going to destroy uh, Jones. He's an animal. He's a beast. I was watching his video training. I'm thinking... Okay, he's got to be on some kind of testosterone therapy or something because he looks, but it's his mindset as well. So what do you, what do you think of that fight? Well, yeah, you know, I've been, been the biggest Mike Tyson fan. Like actually those two guys that I just met, I, I saw him actually uh, last week we were watching something <clears throat> and he was talking about Ramon Deckers. And I said, and these, all these people in the room, they never heard of him. I said, what's this? So I screen shared. Uh, Robin Decker high life grip and man he got crazy as well everybody was like holy crap what is it yeah so you knew you look at him he lost 100 pounds you know he's looking and I saw him training uh, on videos 
it's a very scary guy. And, and, and my stance is completely comes from his and from Ramon Decker's. My, my stance is wide open. I saw know? that. Because it's the best power is the best, best for everything. Oh, you're a white target here. I guess, well, all the fighters that I know and a fight like this never went down to the body. I mean, if it's so easy, why didn't nobody drop us to the body? Because your defense, you know you're open here. So you yeah, automatically so become better at defending it. You know, but people are so afraid. Oh, you got to be tiny. You, you, so the least amount of... Per- I said, dude, you're afraid. You shouldn't be fighting if you fight like yeah. that. Go yeah. work some apps, dude. Learn, learn a skill. Don't be afraid. But now, if I stand square, oh, that's left straight. It's not a jab anymore. I can open with a hook. Can't do that here. I can, but I have to load up, right? That, which is going to open me up. I got to set it up with the cross. All these things that you gain, and especially in high boxing, blocking or checking low kicks and countering blocks and uh, ki- count, uh, blocking and countering kicks. Yeah. So much easier if you just stand wide. Plus, now my inside low kick, I'll decapitate your leg with an inside low kick. I, I've, so, I've, which seen you can't do one of I've seen those videos there. I was watching all these highlights. <clears throat> that kick just boom, wipes them oh. out. It looks like you hit him with a bat. It was unbelievable. The, the power that came out of that. Um, my other question, uh, how old are you now, Abbas? 50, 55. 55, what's your training like now? Like, as your body, what is your training, recovery, as you, you feel just as strong when you were younger, or there's? No, I'm, I'm, I'm more, you know, I, I had this bad problem in my neck, so I lost uh, like uh, 70% of my power in my right arm. It's all atrophied here. But I had my hand back. I couldn't, for, for four years, I could snap my wow. fingers, I couldn't, I couldn't pull a trick. How, how, how did that happen? Just I dropped upside down on my head, scratched my nerves, nerves stopped working, boom, at your feet, and then, but it was everything. It was triceps, the shoulders, and the biceps. Now it's shoulders are coming back, the triceps are back, but my biceps is still not good. It looks really weird in this, uh, you'll see. Okay, oh, if yeah. I do this, you see? Oh, yeah, I see it, I see it. Oh. The whole, this whole muscle is gone. And I, this is big compared to what it was. It was, it was a stick. It was really freaky. And you have to understand, you know, you come, you're a professional fighter. You come, I can do 9-1 on pull-ups, right? Super strong. And then from one day to the other day, I can't grab the milk out of the fridge. It freaked me out, man. It, uh, it uh, yeah, that was, that was not a fun moment. But you know what? Then, you know, slowly but sure, when I got my hand back, I said, God, I'm good, happy enough. Don't worry about it. I'm, uh, thank you for having my hand back because that was a big problem. And then you look at guys like Nick Newell, the fighter, you know, with a, a congenital amputee has half an arm. And if you look at what that guy is doing in mixed martial yeah. arts, it's freaking insane. And I'm complaining about the, <laughs> I still have a hand, dude. He doesn't have that. And he's an incredible human being also and, an, and, a, and a crazy athlete. So that was the moment I said, yeah, you got to stop complaining. And, and and now, so I guess now, are you training it? You're back, you're, you're doing like physical oh, yeah. recovery I'm with it? Oh, yeah. out. I do a lot of cable routines, uh, punching drills. I really love that. It's very hard. It's 35 minutes. It's a lot because I, whatever I, when I push with the cable machine, I also pull later. So okay. I work both muscles all the time. I do straights, body shots, straights, uppercuts. And I do everything 20 repetitions and that whole thing four times. So there is not one second rest. I literally go from one exercise in the other in the pooling and do it. It's like when people look at me, it's like, I'll drain, I, I'll, I'll lose three pounds of sweat like in 35 minutes. I'll go that hard. And, and that's what I train now for. Like if I have a kicking job, I'm looking to the side because I have the standing bag here and where I give low kicks. Yeah. Just one minute round, one minute rounds, one minute break with low kicks, but as hard as I can. And I'll blast through this. So, and as soon as you have all 15 rounds, you can do it easy. I increase it to one minute and five seconds. And I take five seconds away from my rest. So 55 seconds rest. Then once I do that, a week later, I go to one minute, 10 seconds. This is how I always trained when I was fighting. And then suddenly you realize you're at one and a half minute with 30 seconds rest. Now that one and a half minute, I, I go ballistic because people go like, oh, you can do one minute. You cannot do it like me. Trust me. You need to be a professional fighter to do it like me. If you, if you just work out and you run and yeah, you jog into a marathon, you're not going to be able to do it. That's how hard it goes. You know, but I train my body now to throw out a lot of energy in a short amount of time, which would be the only reason for, for me fighting. Absolutely, because yeah. I, I don't need it anymore. I'm not professionally fighting. If something happens, I want to be ready and it's I can slow. go. Look, and I can go 30 minutes. And you know, as long as I do. Once you fight, a street fight has never been over 15 seconds, 10 seconds, yeah. <laughs> right? It depends how many, of course. 
But if it's one on one, that's just one point. It's it, you know, because yeah, well, you're fighting against people who have no clue. But uh, yeah, how, so, how many days? I, are, how many days a week do you, do you train every day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to do uh, every day at least. Yeah. So conditioning, power, conditioning, power, conditioning, power. I go back and forth the whole time. Do you still spar and roll? No, no. I have four plates in my neck, front and back. So uh, I don't take the risk. My my my. My doctor said I can. I go. Are you crazy, dude? I mean, I'm gonna keep my body. I mean, I got. It's all fused. Oh, so wow. uh, I don't want to take a risk getting hit wrong and whatever can happen. That's uh, that's the thing with with sparring. Again, even if you're going light, um, if you have a good sparring partner, it's good. And if you're going light and and you could trust them, you it's almost like you have to be working together. But you've also seen sparring partners who will you know go hard. And again, sometimes you can't control. You might step into to a punch you might fall the wrong way so i mean that's that's the part is i i find as we get older i'm, I'm going to be 44 i just find the recovery is a little bit longer and i've changed as well the way i train <laughs> respecting a little bit more i don't do the crazy stuff i used to do in 20s because your body could take a beating the next day you're fine yep. today it's the threshold is a little bit uh a little bit different i'm, I'm very blessed by my uh it comes from my dad's genetics from his side of the family all these we all look the same his brothers everybody they all look like me, you know, it's all, and, and, and nobody works out. So my brother, it's, it, I mean, he's been a lawyer for his whole life. He's, a, he's even a better athlete than I was. I mean, he jumped higher than I did. Uh, we both did track and field at a high level. And uh, he was just an incredible athlete, but he chose to be an, uh, a lawyer. But otherwise, we could have heard from him as well. Oh, because he's got a lot of figure talent. Then again, he's super smart. Like, I mean, everything he did in his life, every single thing he he uh, graduated cum laude, so he never had something like in Holland. They go to ten. He never had a nine or a nine and a half. He only had tens. Always. How, how did your parents see? You know, you're a fighter. He's a lawyer. Was it like? Oh like, yeah, that was a big thing. Extremes. Oh. Was it a thing? I was the kid with the eczema. We got bullied. They with the horrible disease, and you know, and, and my mother all day long, every night, she had to mummify me, putting uh, bandages on me with creams and cortisones, and using aspirin inhalers and all that crap stuff. And my brother was just uh, boom, 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 going, uh, flying through life. And he's super smart, plays three instruments, also conservatorium, graduated all of the, all three instruments, all cum laude. And while he did the last year of that, he did the first two years for his lawyer to become a lawyer. I mean, the guy's just insane. So, yeah, that was a big difference. But, you know, because I got bullied so much, you know, I was the class clown because nobody would hang out with me. I, had a, I was a leper in school, you know, so uh, nobody wanted to hang out with me. So what do you do? You can start getting attention the negative way, right? To be in the glass clown, you score, you, 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 uh, yeah, you start the, the, the bad stuff in class. That's what I used to do. I uh, think, so I, I kicked off kick a lot of schools. I think it's interesting because most of the fighters, I've heard their stories. <clears throat> Anybody who got into the self defense, who got into the martial arts when they were young, it's always at some point their story always begins with I was bullied, I was yep. picked on, I was the smallest <clears throat> kid, I was made fun of. So I had to learn how to defend myself. So it's kind of like a part of our life that, that made us become who we are and take that, take that road. Oh, it shapes you 100%. I, would, I, I had no clue what I was going to do with my life. I'm a professional chef. That's my profession, a, a, a French culinary chef. No way. Yeah. And, and so from, to make that step to become fighter, just somebody asked me about free fighting, that's what they called it. I was going to be a new organization in Japan, and they go, I said, "Are they going to pay you?" Yeah, are they going to pay me? Yeah, I said, "Books, I'd be honest. That's <laughs> literally. That's, that's I awesome. mean, and, and it comes because and because I did a reunion show in Holland. This was cool because it was 2.8 million people watching the show in Holland. Now, you have to understand, there's 16 million people in Holland, so that's watching here like 55 million people are watching the show. So it's a big show, but none of the bullies showed up, and uh, they were afraid, I guess. But I go, no, I wanted to thank them. I, because because of them, you know, I'm having this great life right here now in America with my family. Everybody's healthy because, you know, I mean, it's all because they did that to me when I was a kid. So, uh, yeah, props to the ones who deserve it. And the one, you know, they all got knocked out. I had a list. So they, I paid them back and they know. And I'm, I'm an actually, and I think also that I helped them doing that with that, you know, because I'm pretty sure after me, he didn't bully anymore. Because now right. anyway, if he can do it, maybe somebody else is going to be able to do it as well. So I think I taught him a lesson. It wasn't too bad. It's not like I crushed somebody. I yeah. will never do that. You know, but uh, teach him a lesson. It's uh, an eye for an eye, right? An eye the Bible. Eye. You can yeah. do it. 
Well, you hear right after you watch the fight. It's hard to believe he got 10 grand for that performance. He made 10 grand for that fight? But he lost. Yeah, if he won, it would have been 50. <laughs> and talk to me a little bit about your acting career. Like, how did you get into acting and why? And I, th- I, th- I, th- I saw your videos. I, I, I had seen the movies back then. And I thought, you're very natural and very entertaining on camera. Did you take, like, I've taken acting classes. Did you take acting classes? Did you... Did you study because it's an art or you were just natural and you went in it? And what made you go into acting? Uh, well, I always wanted to go to America and always wanted to do something in movie, TV business or whatever it was. Stunts, fight choreography, acting, you know, whatever it was. I always wanted to do something like that. So when I moved to America in 97, within three weeks, I was taking acting classes at the Beverly Hills Playhouse here. So uh, because I knew it's a profession, I was not going to be like people who, uh, oh, I can do it. You can't, you it's know. It's an art. People need to know it's an art. I spent five years. It, people think even, even what we're doing right now is because we took acting classes to a certain degree to be yeah. able to be comfortable in front of the camera and speak. Well, look, look, look at people. You know, you, you, you can be a badass in the gym. That doesn't mean anything if you can do it under pressure. We have guys who work circles around world champions. And once they have to perform under pressure, fight themselves, they can. They buckle. They can't handle the stress. Now, that's fighting. Now, good luck with it. And I say, yeah, but I can remember my life. Really? Can you? Because yeah. I remember my very first TV show, and I, I dreamed it. I knew every freaking line. And you know my first question was? Line. I forgot immediately. Three cameras in my face. Wow. You know, all the shit. It was, it, it was crazy, you know? And it, but it's the same as a fighter. When you're a fighter... You rather fight than you do the interviews afterwards. I was always uncomfortable doing interviews, but you know, slowly but surely, you get used to it, and it becomes normal, just like fighting, mm. you know. And then, and I think what the biggest thing helped me also because acting, acting classes, it you know, it's really hard. You, you, when you, you took acting classes, like your first scene that you have to do in front of the class, the you monologue, monologue oh. you're freaking sweating bullets, right? My heart is up. I go, dude, I'm a fighter. I'm, I'm scared. What the heck is going on? You know, but you need to control it. It's just new. It's just new. You need to find out how to deal with that, just like you did in fighting, as I did in fighting. So, you know, and, and I think that a lot, what helped me a lot was starting to cover tape for the Pride Fighting Championship because this was live. I could not mess up. And if I messed up, well, I have to keep going. I have to find ways to trigger and to just keep on going. I think that helped me a lot in the acting department as well. That's awesome. I, I love that story. Again, because... I you know you hear people i want to go into acting and i want to be an actor and i'm like you you know you have to go to school or take classes and like learning how to fight and throw a strike is the same thing to be right there in that present moment and be focused with what he's saying you can't you can't be in can't take an, you can't be in in front of uh you know who you're working with or reading your lines and you're thinking of your lines as you're talk he's talking you got to be listening to what he's saying so you, that timing is more precise than throwing a punch back and forth. Oh, so most. You know, my first scene was I did this. Oh, I, I, I would love to see one more time because I did such a bad job on it. It was called 18 Wheels of Justice. It was this long time ago. And I could dream everything. Now, what happened was it was a Thursday. And it was going to be Friday was a holiday. So it was an extra long weekend. I had the last scene of the day. I was a bank robber. And they put on a wig and we and we shit and it started sweating and this everybody started itching and you know and the the, the, the glasses start sliding off. I'm forgetting my lines, you know. And everybody wanted to go home because they had a long weekend and nobody that was the last year of the day. So then I messed up like the sixth time in a row, and then people behind me go like oh, like that. <laughs> I turned around and I go, You're not helping! Can't you see I'm freaking out here? Can you and, so, and I went to town and everybody started laughing because I started laughing about it as well. I go, I'm so freaking lost right now, please, you know. And then that right away, I should have done it sooner. I boom, I hit it right away and the scene was good. You know, I got it out of my system. That's... But I had to do it because more pressure, more pressure, more pressure. That's why I always tell these guys who, uh, who are fighters, you know, my students, <coughs> before the fight, they tell the whole world to go to fight. They tell the whole world what they're going to do to their opponent. Going to break this, shut up, and all these words, and especially if it's a video, and they play that just before you come up. Well, now you better do what you just said. 
a lot of pressure. Much pressure. You don't stay away from that crap. You don't need it. I will, what if you talk crap about your opponent? Now you fight a crappy opponent. No, bring your opponent up. You're fighting a good guy. You know, he's good. I think I'm a little bit better, you know, but that's how you do it. That's really smart. And, and my last question, what is, what is, what is Bass Routins? What is your plan for the future? What would you like to see yourself or do? Do you have an, an overall objective or goal as your, you know? Well, so is that, is that, is that the bothering you, the, the sound in the back? No, no, it's fine. Oh, okay, good. So, um, I was a severe asthma patient. And when I was 40, I, I realized that after an asthma attack, I would resume my track and field. Now, an asthma attack with me would be eight days in bed, not able to eat because I couldn't breathe. Like, 24 7, eight days back. But afterwards, when I resume my track and field, I would break my running times all the time. And it drove me nuts. And I figured out because I was an asthmatic patient, I had every month I had breathing classes. And I went to the doctor's office uh, for a breathing class. And I saw, I saw a post of a, of a pair of lungs, a drawing of a pair of lungs on the wall. And that's when I realized, oh, wait a minute, because it, it showed the lung infection is not in the lungs, the lung infection is the airways that go to the lung. So, and they showed an infected airway and they showed a healthy airway. And I'm going, you know, I've, been, I've been pulling air into an infected area. So unknowingly, I've been working out with resistance, pulling air in. Many years later, nine years ago, I stopped making the product. We were going to call it the routinizer. So we, because I thought, why don't I come up with, a, with something that controls the air intake? Many years later, I started. Nine years ago, uh, I started training with it. In three weeks, my asthma is gone. Now, oh, find right. this. I always carry an inhaler with me everywhere I went. Because I'm a guy exercising, sneezing. If I sneeze violently, I have to spray my lungs open. They're close. You know, every single fight I had, I had to spray my lungs open before the fight. Always. Now I don't even have it anymore. I don't even carry it anymore. You know, it was gone. Sent it to my buddy in Holland. He had asthma. Eight days later, he called me. He wants to sell it in Holland. He's selling them actually right now in Europe. Also, asthma is good. So now we start getting these things. That is my main thing right now. That's the auto trainer. Because right now we're helping so many people with COPD, asthma, anxiety, PTSD. I mean, the things that it's doing right now, back problems. I mean, it's insanity. Uh, Everything is, it, it's, it got so big. I got in contact with a guy who trains four gold medalists who's using it. He had 12 published medical journals that back up everything that I've been saying wow. in the past. Now it's 100% proven, clinically proven, what I have, not clinically tested, what people say. No, no, no. If you have a product that says clinically tested, don't buy the product because if it was clinically proven, it would have said clinically proven, mm-hmm. clinically Good tested. Point. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, well, means it, the test. You're right. It's being being tested, and the other one means it's been proven. So there's yeah. a big yeah. It's true. I never I never kind of thought about it like that, but that, I guess that's the marketing people use, and they the marketing to they, they try that, you know, because they read the word clinically. Oh, it's clinically tested. It's got to be good. No, what was the result of the test? There's a result of the test. Right? Point. Is this like a uh, what was it? Oreo, what are these little circles? Oh, I think it's Oreos. May lower cholesterol. Yeah, it may lower a lot of other things. May do it other, a lot of other things. May lower? Really? That's how you come up with it? You know? Yeah, it may also increase the cholesterol, right? If it, it may lower it. So those things are just to get in people's side in, in their heads. And uh, But anyway, to go back to the story, it's helping so much people right now. And it's doing very well. And I'm so stoked about it because my, my wife all the time said it, but I, I, I started losing confidence a little bit in it. I knew how powerful it is because I'm doing it every day and I've seen the results, but it's, it's a plastic thing. And people look at it and they go like, and I, and I tell them, I said, I know this, it looks really stupid. What it does for you is just bizarre. It controls the, the air intake. A lot of people don't know. You know how, um, you know how stamina works? There's people that think, oh, yeah, you train hard. Yeah, but how does it work? Why yeah. do you get it better shape? There's a reason for that. Well, it's very simple. You train a muscle over and over again. It becomes stronger. It becomes more efficient. And once it becomes more efficient, it uses less oxygen. That's how your stamina yeah. increases. There's a bunch of other reasons, but this is one of the major reasons your stamina increases. Train a muscle over and over again with yeah. the system. It becomes more efficient, and you lose, use less oxygen. What people don't know is that we all, the average human being has about 10 pounds of breathing muscles. People get breathing muscles, yeah, breathing muscles, like your diaphragm, which is a, it's like the skirt steak. If you eat a skirt steak, that's actually the diaphragm. And, and the costal muscles, which are the muscles in between your rib cage. You know, those muscles, if you don't work those out, 
That's a problem. And there's no other way to work about it with assistance with a thing like this. Dr. Belize, I've read it, she wrote without breathing experts. She said that gassing, that feeling of gassing, is oxygenated blood leaving your limbs mm. to support your breathing muscles because they're not up to date. So we all train and we all get stronger with everything we're doing. We go from the 1.0 to the 2.0 body, but we forget our breathing muscles. Absolutely. This thing trains the breathing muscles. Now everything is at the same level. And that result, I mean, if you see me going through my workouts, I shouldn't be in shape like that. I did four conditioning workouts in the last eight weeks. Wow. And, from, and those four were in the last 10 days. So Where? Anything for separate. I went to Europe, I traveled everything, and I'm looking at my wife and go, this is insanity. Mm -hmm. I just fly through it. You where know, can somebody yeah. find that? If, if they want to buy it, uh, where can they find it? <coughs> O2trainer.com. O2trainer.com. No, but just to make sure, because I know people are going to do zero two trainer, so I okay. have a domain as well. Just so what, I'll, sure. what, I'll do, uh, what I'll do right now, if you guys are watching the video, I'll put the link in the comment box if you guys want to go check out the <coughs> site and order it. And, uh, and that's it. Bas. Uh, I want to thank you for your time and coming on, uh, on on the show. It's been a pleasure. I'm a huge fan, and I think um, I, I've been following you since I first saw you on YouTube. And uh, I think it's amazing that you're still training. You're still there. You're you're acting. You're 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 an ins you're you're inspiring me to kind of. I'm looking at you. I'm like, okay, I, I, this is the direction I want to follow as well. So. Nice. Well, good, good, good. I toned down a lot. I got these really great habits that I do every day, stretching every day. I, I, I've, these routines that we do for years, you know, if, if that's the thing with me. If I have a habit, a good habit, I'll never break the habit. It's like using your turn signal. I'll do that at 4 o'clock at night when nobody's behind me. I just don't break the habit. Use your turn signal. People do that too. Yes, people. Looking at you, people at home. Use your freaking turn signal. It's the most annoying thing. If I have to wait, 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 and then suddenly you realize, oh, they didn't, who does that, you know? And if you do it to them, they're going to be angry. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the fun part, is. you know? But, oh, no, no, I look at me, I look at me. And you know, the worst part is the bigger the car or the more expensive the car, the less they, they do it. Because apparently, you know, they're a bigger car, they're bigger than you. And for a more expensive car, they may be better at you, they think. Uh -huh. You know, people are so obsessed with that, uh, with the, but the earthly possessions, what we call it, right? You want to stay far away from them. the things that will not make your life better, but they feel like they make it better, but they won't. You know, have a happy life, man. Be happy every day. Uh, thank God. Thank, thank, thank when you're healthy. Thank when your family is healthy. So Health is everything. It's really everything. Be people, that take, money. people take yeah. that for granted. You know what I mean? Uh, I always tell, tell you, you know, be happy with yourself. You know create the best life have a good circle of friends take care of your family you know invest in your mind and your body eat well exercise and i think that you know that's a, that's a big that's a big game changer in someone's life for sure and exercising too you know if you're stressed out whatever it is exercise and don't focus all these people they want to right away they could do an hour no 10 yeah. minutes whatever man you just wait oh no you used to go to 15 minutes Everything is better than nothing. Everything. So even doing a 10 minute, just walking, whatever it is, you walk a hill or a little bit of resistance. Everybody wants to go too fast. Everything is baby steps. Right. Just like I said with the, with right. the training, I do yeah. this with everything. I cut salt out because salt is a really bad one. Yeah. Right? I use it on my steak and everything, but on vegetables, everything, I don't do it. Did I cut it out right away? No, I take 10% less. Next week, 10% less. Next week, 10% less. In, 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 in six weeks, you don't even notice anything. You don't even notice it. Yeah, but cut it right away out. Yeah, it's going to be harder now. You want that taste? Just go to sugar. Same thing. You know, just start slower than surely. And do this with everything in your life. You know, Dwayne Ludwig always said, you know, it's, about, it's a journey. It's not a, it, it's not a race. Yeah, it's good point. Your time. If you have a fight coming up within three weeks, yeah, now you got to push. But guess what? The regular person doesn't have that. So yeah. why would you want to do it in two months? Give it six months. You know, nice and relaxed. Because most of the time when you go too hard, the next day you're so messed up that it might steer you away from going back on track. So Good point. Everything in baby steps and your life is going to be just fine. I used to do two-minute rounds with the tight pads. Two minutes. My full power. Full power. And people would look at me like I was crazy. And before the fight, I would do seven six-minute rounds. Every week I would increase 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Let your body slowly but surely get used to more and more and more. And suddenly... They can do one round of six minutes the way I do it. Well, I do seven of them. 
Good yes, point. It but it's because I started slow. Yeah, right. and, and, and I think that goes for anything that we do in life. But I everything. mean, we live in a society where we want everything fast now, today, yep. and everything takes time. I go, everything is a, is a matter of building, of stacking, of gradual. If you go too fast, you're just going to crash because your body, your mind well, is not prepared for such intensity so quickly. So I yep. think those are great words of wisdom. So, Bass, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to meet you, and thank you for being, uh, you know, you know, sharing all this great knowledge that you have over the years. And uh, I'm going to keep uh, watching what you're doing closely. I want to thank you, Bass. You're welcome. And, uh, that's it. Stay safe. Stand strong, guys. Mm -hmm.